All right, this is One Last Midnight, and welcome back to another episode of Air. Sorry I've been busy this last week, so I haven't put out a video, but the new update for Air has come out, and it's 1.15. And there's been a few changes that are notable. One of the biggest changes that they've made is they moved to the Unreal Engine 4.23. Now, that is not the current Unreal Engine. The current Unreal Engine is 4.25, but they decided to go two versions back. And I can understand this being a programmer, nobody really wants to jump on the latest bandwagon of your development environment because what if it has bugs in it? Honestly, I don't know why they did that, but I'm speculating that's the reason why. Going to the new Unreal Engine does give optimization to Astroneer. And I immediately saw it in my frame rate. I also felt like it was and this is kind of hard to explain, but it felt like the game was smoother, that the character moved more smoothly. I don't know if that's attributed to the new engine or not, but it does for me feel a lot smoother. That also means that there's a smaller package size for consoles and also a lower memory footprint. And I can attribute to the lower memory footprint, Astroneer is no longer gobbling up all kinds of memory. Another significantly new change into the game is this concept of platform locking. Now, before the platform would only lock into place if you plugged it into some sort of power source, meaning that power cable that's on the platform, if you plugged it into another platform or a, another base building piece such as your HAB, then the platform would actually lock down. You would see the little things go down into the ground, meaning that you could no longer move it anymore. That is not how the platforms work from here on out. The platforms are movable until you manually lock them in place. I really love this concept. I love the idea of being able to place my platforms down and lock them into place and never have to worry about them flying away or have some sort of power cable connected to it. In my production base, I have lights set off to the side i have platforms that are independent of each other i have storage in the middle that's not plugged into anything and there was always a concern and sometimes a problem of me grabbing a platform and having it move around that's no longer the case now i can just lock those suckers down and i never ever have to worry about them moving again this is a big thumbs up for me this is a huge huge change i love the fact that they made this change Another change that they've made is to the train tool equipping and um, the activation when related to the backpack. Now, what does that all mean? Well, if you have your terrain tool out and you open up your backpack, the terrain tool will be displayed with your backpack as out. If your terrain tool was put away, you don't have it out at all, and you open up your backpack, you're only going to see your backpack open up. One of the things that I, they did fix and I really, really like is the fact that if you use the left or mouse button or whatever the, you know, console equivalent controller buttons, it would previously immediately start deforming the terrain. Now that doesn't happen until the backpack is closed. So the next action after the backpack is closed, then it will deform the terrain. I can't tell you how many times I flattened out an area gone to close the backpack with my left mouse button and have it deform the terrain while closing the backpack. That always upset me because I, it destroyed the work that I was doing when I was playing in the backpack. I like the fact now that I have to close the backpack and then the next action that's performed will actually use the terrain tool. A few other additional changes have been made into the game. The slotting of items is now improved and so when you're going to slot an item or hook up a cable it is now snapping to the nearest available slot to the cursor so you don't have to worry about it you know jumping off to a, a different slot which it did sometimes it's now more precise targeting so you should be able to get the item into the correct slot every single time now Inside of the customization menu, they have made sections collapsible. This is great because as items were continuing to be introduced, whether it's a free limited time event item or it's part of the new Outfitters store items, 
these lists were getting very long. And so being able to collapse these sections is really helpful to be able to target what you're looking for and not have to constantly scroll down through this enormously long list. Another change that was made to the Exo Outfitters icon is if, that, if there's a new item in the store, they'll have a little indicator showing that there is a new item in the store. Unfortunately, at the time that I took this video, I had already clicked on it. But it's uh, essentially the same little icon that you get in the customization when there is a new item that you purchased or a new item that you unlocked from a limited time event. There were some new changes to the EXO Outfitters. There's a new partnered pack, which gives you uh, two different hats. It gives you the black and white cowboy hat with a mask, and it also gives you a little gun to emote. On top of that, there are new emotes, and it seems to be a lot of the items that are added to the EXO Outfitters is very sports themed. So the new red card item, touchdown item, jumping jacks item, jump shot item, this theme kind of continues. Uh, there's a safety yellow palette, which is not really a sports related theme. But wouldn't it be cool if they could get uh, permission from some of the sports teams to use their logos. But also with the new hats, you'll see a bicycle hat and a football helmet and masks that are also related to sports items as well as visors. There are tons of bugs that were fixed. And I'm not going to go through every single one of the defects that were fixed, but I am going to point out some of the noticeable ones that everybody has been experiencing. And they fixed a bug where the power cables will become twisted. I don't know if you remember this or if you've seen this. I've, I always see this in the past where you pull out a power cable and the power cable gets a little bit torqued. Supposedly that's fixed and you should no longer see that again. Also, they're claiming that they fixed that the rover and the buggy no longer clip through the ground anymore. That's going to be something that we're going to have to test out in the future. Currently, right now, it looks like it's working, but maybe I should load up some previous builds to see if that problem is still happening again. And a defect that was really, you know, bothering everybody, which was when you open up the backpack to print something, that little hologram on the bottom down there was kind of jittering around. Well, that bug has now been resolved. Like I said, I'm not going to read through all of these. There were some fixes for the store. There were some fixes for multiplayer. There was a couple crash fixes, PS4 fixes, and Xbox One fixes. The list isn't too dramatically long, but you could go ahead and the link is in the description below. You could go read those for yourself. All right, and that was it for me for the update of Astroneer 1.15. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.